Welcome to Art and Object. I'm very pleased to present to you uh, the quite extraordinary contents of our latest catalogue, our Rugby Memorabilia Auction, which is taking place this coming Thursday the 13th at 6.30 New Zealand time for what I hope is lots of international viewers to our latest video presentation. This is a very exciting catalogue and we've had wonderful feedback already. There's 160 lots of rugby memorabilia stretching from 1884, the first year of the New Zealand team, uh, to the current day. I'm standing here with some items which just had to be included. They're not in your catalogue, they're late entries. They will become lot 124A, and these are these two extraordinary signed documents uh, being tour itineraries signed by the players of the 1905 Originals and the 1924 Invincibles. They have fabulous provenance, having previously hung in the BNZ, the Bank of New Zealand headquarters in London for many, many years, and they were given to a loyal employee many decades ago. What we have here in the 1905 tour itinerary are all the signatures of the players, some of the greats of the past, Dave Gallagher, of course, Billy Wallace, uh, the signatures of George Tyler are in wonderful condition and here you can see all of the games and all of the fixtures scores from the 1905 tour. So this is really quite an important piece of New Zealand rugby history here in conjunction with the similar item almost identical from the 1924 Invincibles tour. We're particularly fortunate in this catalogue to have some very rare and very early signed photographs. And this is the most important of the signed All Blacks photographs. This is the originals, the New Zealand football team that toured Great Britain in 1905 and 1906, taken at Newton Abbott at the time of their very first game. And of course it was the 1905 originals for whom the term All Blacks was coined. And actually it was something of a mistake. A reporter of the day marvelling at the dynamic play of the All Black team referred to them as a team of All Backs. But that got lost in translation somewhere along the line and the name, the term All Blacks went into legend. So here they are, the All Blacks, the originals of 1905. This photograph is in magnificent condition and oh so rare with the signatures of the team. The story of the All Blacks begins in 1884. This is really quite an extraordinary item and when it came to art and object I was quite gobsmacked uh, and that has been the reaction of many people who have seen this piece subsequently. This is a cap from 1884, the first New Zealand representative team. So this is really ground zero for the New Zealand All Blacks. Of course they weren't called the All Blacks and they didn't play in black in 1884. They played in navy blue with gold trim. So this to my mind really is a treasure, the most important piece of New Zealand rugby memorabilia that's ever been offered uh, in the marketplace. They say lightning doesn't strike twice, but in this catalogue it really has because here's a cap from 1896. One of my favourite pieces is this uh, 1924 Invincibles souvenir ball signed by the players from the Invincibles team who won 32 matches, all 32 matches on tour. That's the tour of Bert Cook, George Nepia and many of the All Blacks who have entered into legend. This is in absolutely superb condition. I've only ever seen one other example of this, but the signatures on this and the quality of the ball makes this really quite a unique item. And here they are, the Invincibles, that legendary team of 1924. This is a superb photograph, the condition of this official Crown Studio photograph. There it is annotated, Crown Studios, Cuba Street, Wellington is in magnificent condition. Uh, it's really quite an honour to be able to offer this particular photograph signed by the team and it really does take you back to those great days of New Zealand amateur rugby. And one of the pieces that has really caught uh, our attention is this very rare and unique record of the selection of the 1924 All Blacks, the Invincibles. Here we have seven selectors, I repeat, seven wise men to select the 1924 Invincibles. And this photographic record of that selection process is really a very important historical document. South Island Possibles and Probables, who played a trial match to select the South Island team. We have the North Island Probables and Possibles, who played a trial match to select the North Island team. They then played off in another trial from which the All Blacks, the 1924 Invincibles, were selected. 
So this is a wonderful document and one that has really captivated uh, the rugby historians who have seen it to date. Uh, my grandfather was in fact manager of the 1960 All Blacks to South Africa to play the Springboks. So uh, when I was a young boy, the stories of the great Springbok legends uh, we discussed uh, well into the night. And here we have the first All Black team to tour to South Africa. And in addition to that, I have this wonderful souvenir guide which lists the biographic details of both the All Black and Springboks teams signed by the All Blacks that toured South Africa in 1928. Here we have the earliest photograph in the entire catalogue and guess what, it's 1884 again. This is the 1884 Canterbury team that played Otago in that year and so you can see those provincial rivalries go back over a hundred years. Now this photograph is absolutely delightful and it's quite important because it contains three of the players including the captain of the 1884 New Zealand representative team for which we have the cap. To me it really feels like we've got the, the entire story of New Zealand rugby in this catalogue. Unfortunately we're only human and occasionally we make a mistake and there's an absolutely fabulous mistake in this photograph uh, from 1903. Uh, when I catalogued it of course I looked at the annotations on the rear and on the rear it says New Zealand tour to Australia 1903 George Nicholson and G.A. Tyler, that's George Tyler. Well as soon as the catalogue was published I got an email from a gentleman who said no you're wrong. In fact the gentleman on the left is Dave Gallagher who went on to become the captain of the 1905 originals. So for those of you that were interested in this item, it's even more valuable and rare as it depicts the captain, the future captain of the 1905 originals. Um, and this is them uh, taken in Sydney on tour. So when they say what goes on tour stays on tour, here's a little item from 1903. And here we have a very early and fascinating item. This is 1904. This is the 1904 British Isles team obviously later to be called the Lions, a signed postcard from 1904. That's the team, the British Isles, who then, at that stage played in hoops uh, and a very rare and early example of one of the early touring teams to New Zealand. Peter Bush is without question New Zealand's greatest and perhaps the world's greatest ever rugby photographer. He has been capturing some classic moments of All Blacks and international rugby now for 40 years plus. There's Colin Mead's uh, in the lineout against the French in 1968, um, one of the great uh, images of New Zealand rugby back in the lineouts before lifting. This is a match from 1966, a classic, that classic tour. Uh, there's Brian Lahore, Cal Tremaine, Ken Gray versus the 1966 Lions. This one's a bit special. It's signed by Brian Lahore. One of the particular strengths of this catalogue is the book section and uh, we have five of the ten rarest New Zealand rugby books including one of the very earliest. This book here is from 1893 uh, by T. Ayton and it is an account of the 1888 Natives Tour to the UK. So that is a very very rare publication and one of the earliest rugby publications in New Zealand. Lot 11 the Art of Rugby Football by T.R. Ellison from 1902 is something of a holy grail book for rugby collectors. It's extremely rare. I've never seen one before in as good a condition as this with the cover intact like this. It's an instructional book, so back in the day, of course, it would have been well-thumbed because this is the book that coaches of the day would use to get started. A really important book and in many ways one of the foundation publications of the game in New Zealand. Behind me is one of many star lots in this catalogue. This is 107. This is Sean Fitzpatrick's jersey from the 1987 World Cup final, signed by him the last time that New Zealand won the World Cup in 1987, and of course, hopefully, not the last time. There are over 160 lots in the Art and Object Rugby catalogue going to auction this coming Thursday the 13th at 6.30pm. We have a whole variety of match-worn jerseys, caps, including this one, signed by Doug Howlett and Joe Rokothoko, all on view this week and we look forward to seeing you. Come along and enjoy it. It's a great slice of the history of our national game. We've really enjoyed putting it on and we invite you to come down and enjoy it too.